Hi, everybody. I'm quite happy to see a few Rodin Protocols developers there. Uh, today I'll talk. I had two talks. I'll just merge them into one. And um, it's mostly about how we can work toward interoperability. Uh, many of you know about NetJSON. For those who don't know, uh, NetJSON is a data interchange format designed for networking software, which is based on JSON. And uh, it's designed to work with dynamic routing protocols, network databases, also known as node databases, monitoring tools, and firmwares like OpenWRT. Uh, it's designed for these kind of communities, like community networks, uh, I contribute to Linux.org, and but also um, for municipal Wi-Fi research or ISPs. Um, I work in municipal Wi-Fi, so you might be wondering what are you talking about exactly. So um, I'll show you a few examples really quickly. So, the network graph object represents the topology of a network. is um, a JSON file. Here it is. No? Up? No? No? Fuck. I assume it was working. Wait a moment. Not working. So. Yeah, here it is. Sorry. Okay. So here you can see. Hmm? This okay? Okay. So. Let me see. You see a uh, type network graph. Uh, there is some eight meta information about the routing protocol. And then there is the list of nodes and the list of links. Uh, it, it's a very simple topology just for, to show the example. Uh, some fields are optional. Uh, a few fields are mandatory. So I'll show you also the list of links. In this example, we have only one link. OK, so now I have to go back to the slide. I hope it works. Uh, we are here. OK. And here it is. The other object It's. Can you see, or do I have to zoom? OK. okay. So it, here is a slightly more complex uh, example. You still have type. You can still see type. Uh, and this JSON structure is really similar to UBUS. Uh, who does know UBUS here? OK, UBUS is a command line tool in OpenWRT, which outputs information in JSON format. And uh, some of this information is, has a very similar structure to UBUS. It was inspired by UBUS, but it was also inspired by other projects that try to describe information about device in JSON format. And this is quite more complex. You have all the information needed to represent the network configuration. Although the specification, we are still working on it, so there's still time to change things. List of interfaces and routing protocols, DNS, and so on. Okay. Now I can go ahead. Okay. No? Are you taking questions during the talk? 
Yeah, maybe maybe after uh, af at the half talk because there are two merged. So, or whenever you feel like if you are really if you cannot resist. Okay, so okay, so I want to tell you how this idea, where does this idea come from? Uh, in 2013 and 2014, I was working a lot with GeoJSON, which is uh, a geospatial in data interchange format. This is an example. Can you read? Um, so you you see that NetJSON is, is inspired by GeoJSON because uh, GeoJSON has type feature. It has a geometry that represents <clears throat> either a point or a polygon or a line or a multi-line or a collection of geometries. And then you have a properties object, which is um, uh, you can stuff how many properties you want here. It, it just needed for visualization or, or other stuff. And this is a very simple example. There are more complex examples. So what is GeoJSON for? It allows different uh, geographic libraries to interoperate, for example. Uh, here you can see I'm using Python. Uh, I'm telling that library, uh, which is Geos, is a library written in C. In C. And I'm passing a GeoJSON string to it. And the library understands how to convert that string into an internal representation. So it means a lot of, most of the software used in the geographic world is interoperable. It's written by different people in different languages, but you don't need to redevelop everything in a new language just to do stuff. You can reuse what there is there, and you can use GeoJSON or other data interchange formats to exchange data between libraries. So GeoJSON also facilitates creating maps for web pages. Here we have an example. This is actually GitHub. And now I'll show it to you. This is a screenshot. I'll show you here. I prepared it before because I know it was going to be a pain in the ass. This is a map. This is the code. Actually, this is the code. This is the GeoJSON. It's taken directly from the NodeShot API. It represents the uh, nodes of the Linux network in Pisa. So it's a small part of the network. You can just paste it into GitHub, and GitHub will render a map. Automatically, you don't have to do any work. And if you click on it, you will see the properties. And it wouldn't be very hard to uh, make an editor to edit those properties. So I hope now you are getting where I'm going to. So uh, you can also create a map with one line of code here. For some reason, it's cut the screen is cut out, but I don't think I can do much. Well, it's just a nail there. Um, so here is a GeoJSON, and you, you pass it to a map object, and the map will render the, the points or lines on the map, and it's really easy. So. Uh, in 2014, I was working with a Google Summer of Code student. Um, I was mentoring a Google Summer of Code student to develop NetEngine, which is an um, experimental library to, uh, let's say, an experimental abstraction layer to extract information from devices independently from the protocol you're using, like SSH, HTTP, or SMP. You would get the same JSON a very similar JSON, depending on the information available. So while developing this, we realized we needed some standard JSON. And it should be something like GeoJSON. So on October 2014, we started working on it. We started sending out the first drafts. And 
we started getting the first feedback, and so on. So you might be wondering still, why? Why are you doing this? If you ever try to uh, develop heterogeneous software for networks, and for heterogeneous, I mean, you have different configuration, different device types, so you're, you might not be using only one type of firmware, but more firmwares, more vendors, and so on, more protocols. You might have been feeling like this. And it's very annoying because vendors don't care about interoperability, and even the free software projects are too busy and they lack the resources to care. And yeah, there is SMP, but um, whoever tried to work with it had to develop his own abstraction layer or something to avoid going crazy. I second that. <laughs> Give that man a cookie. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so silos plus uh, vendor lock-in, like Ubiquiti has done with his, its SDK, and equals very slow innovation. And we are all paying consequences of this practice, of this situation, because if you look at other fields, like virtualization, web development, and yeah, they're going very fast. They're evolving, it's becoming simpler. Uh, there are a lot of tools and people are able to build complex uh, things with very little effort and they're thriving. While in the networking world, everything is so difficult, uh, people are not attracted by it, everything is complicated and there's no interoperability. But we can do better than this. We can achieve interoperability, I think and we can create an ecosystem, and we can foster growth. Ha 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 ha, but how? It will be, I already expect Julius questions later are going to make me sweat, but that's life. So for example, you could, you could ideally export or import or deploy device configurations. You could, this is actually probably the easiest thing to do, you could visualize the network topology for any routing protocol. Something like this, you could build a visualizer like this, but even a 3D visualizer with WebGL. And small libraries developed by different communities, written in different languages, can interoperate. And, oops, oh no, it's true. Um, so, uh, all these communities are developing all these tools that are really cool, but it's very hard to integrate them, so every community ends up redeveloping the same tools. But if we change our direction and try to go to this path, I, already, I've, uh, I have already observed with the geographic world that this can happen. Uh, small communities, Developers can build a new tool and all the other communities or groups can integrate it really easily. And I think we should facilitate this. And I hope you like it too. And so, current implementations. Uh, we, we have a few uh, experimental implementations in OLSR Network Framework, which is also known as OLSR2, thanks to Anning. Uh, you can query the protocol for uh, the information of the routes and also the topology. There is NetDiff, which is a small Python library uh, that we use to understand changes in the topology so we can update the links on the database. Uh, so we decouple the code uh, that works with the database from the code that understands what changes in the topology. We have uh, parses for OLSR, Batman Advanced, BMX6, CNML, and NetJSON itself. And plus, uh, if you parse one of these uh, formats, you can convert it to NetJSON network graph. And there is uh, a tool in NetEngine to output interface information in NetJSON. And so we are working on it. And we have a roadmap. We need more implementations. So if you are able to and you want to help us, 
please try. And um, we, I want to implement it in Nodeshot, which is the mapping tool we use in Linux. Uh, I'd also like to develop a visualizer, something similar to what the German people have, Mesh Viewer, which is really cool. Maybe uh, we'll start with something much simpler. We need more feedback, and we need to integrate this feedback. And when we are ready, we need to freeze the specification and uh, uh, define a JSON schema, which is a standard. You can check it out, jsonschema.org. With this stuff, we can do pretty cool, pretty cool other stuff, like validation of the JSON structure, or even UI user interface generation. And uh, I'm already working on an RFC, although this will be quite a long process. Cool, okay. So if you want to help out, uh, read this pack. It's not very long. I, I assure you, you can read it in 15 minutes maximum. Try to implement it in one of your um, projects. And please, please send, send us feedback and uh, constructive criticism is very welcome, and you'll make me very happy. So, if you want to find more about NetJSON, just type netjson.org, you will be redirected to the GitHub repository, and there you will find the link to the mailing list where you can follow up development, send questions, or whatever you feel like. Um, so, here it finishes the first talk. The second talk is very re related to this one. If you want to ask questions regarding NetJSON now, or we can do it later one uh, all together, or you prefer. Should I go there? Should I go ahead? Sorry. Maybe just as a comment, it's quite easy to write applications for this. I spent, I think, two afternoons writing a visualization tool for the network topology, which automatically updates Yeah, and also Axel gave me quite a cool idea yesterday. Uh, uh, he told me, for example, that he, if every distance vector protocol uh, implements the network routes, a network graph, um, we can build a generic collector for all distance vector protocol to build the entire topology. And that, that's quite a cool idea. Um, we still don't realize all the potentialities of um, a standard that we can all share. But I'm very sure that it could be something that could change us the way we work, and it will surely improve life of developers, especially the developers like me who develop end user applications. So you might be wondering why I'm so much interested in interoperability. Okay, go ahead. It's very related. I want to tell why I'm so interested in interoperability and give some other suggestions to uh, software developers. Yeah, go ahead. That's true. But I have the, I have the domain. Because the name is over I used to do search engine optimization, don't worry. Uh, so who is generating them? Okay. Um, the routing information should be, um, what sh let's say there are different objects. 
there is a device configuration object which should output only uh, the configuration or the static attributes of uh, a node or a device. Uh, while there is a network graph, that, that's something that constantly changes, and the uh, network routes too. Um, and there, there's also another object called device monitoring, which has object that constantly changes. So who should implement uh, which object? That depends on what you do. But for sure, uh, the main routing protocols should implement network routes and network graph. Either the routing, the routing protocol themselves or some tools like Alfred or other tools for distance vector protocols. And uh, node databases should both be able to output that data via an API, but also they should be able to read it so they can accept data from other libraries or other piece of software. Oh, you need to uh, write a small uh, module that when queried somehow, uh, for example via HTTP or whatever you prefer, um, outputs the JSON with. Yeah, that would be awesome. And you will combine it with other stuff and do some magic, so it's a yeah. single yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fine. Very cool. Other questions regarding NetJSON? Uh, how do you uh, treat measurements? So usually in JSON you just have embedded numbers, but what you really want to have uh, are really values with the unit. So you want to have measurements. Mm -hmm. Do you have an idea how to, how you would include that? Um, are you meaning, uh, is there some kind of limitation to the JSON? No, since, uh, not a threshold by means of a number, but a threshold by, by means that if your power consumption exceeds this amount of hmm. joule over this amount of time, don't. So how would you handle these units of measurement, so these different units of measurement? So, okay, so we are working also, even though it's until now, I have to be sincere, is the object I've worked less because I mostly work on the routing uh, stuff first. There's this moni device monitoring example here, which contains, which is, has a similar structure to device configuration, but has only data that changes constantly. And we just have to be sure that this makes sense and um, is also extensible. So there will be uh, many attributes that will be standard. But if you need, you can put your own attributes. Um, did, did that ans uh, answer your question? or? Yeah, the standard units are going to be. Exactly, and also um, I would like to have suggestions on how to write the spec. Although most of the uh, UBUS inspired fields will follow that uh, specification unless uh, it's not feasible. Um, for the moment, the device configuration and device monitoring are the objects that have just a draft spec. It's not very detailed. Yes. Thanks. 
device, but if you all mesh or all logic, for instance, you have to do some kind of collection demo probably to, to solve that. Yes, you could write a collection demo. So if you understand, if I understand your question, you're asking how do we deal with multiple routing protocols and I'm the same device, exactly. okay, um, this problem, thanks to Henning, has come up already. There is um, another object. If I manage to open, come on. Okay, let's watch the example directly. It's called Network Collection. This is also inspired by GeoJSON. GeoJSON has a feature collection object. Can you read or should I? No, it's good. Okay. So uh, you have a collection which is an array where you can put multiple objects, any object. And in your case, you should put uh, all the routing protocols here, one after the other, yeah. if you need to have them all in one object. If, go. Is it like when you do microtopologies or some switch, you can just dump any amount of net names, net tracing data into this collection as long as some key fields are different. So when you have routing data in your routing protocol, Okay. Welcome.